everybody. We have a little fun. Check something out today. So, um, as you know, I've been keeping this lawn pretty short this year. I'm trying to see if I have, uh, you know, more or less maintenance in a sense uh, going out here. Uh, definitely mowing more than I ever have, just because I'm keeping it really low. Um, if you can see behind me, I still have that middle section cut to a half inch, but I'm letting the rest of the grass grow up a little bit. It's uh, oh, it's getting close to two inches right now. I'm gonna let it come up a little bit more, um, just to actually give a little definition between the cornhole green and uh, the rest of the lawn. That's really all there is to it. But Anyway, so far I haven't seen any more uh, watering, even that water I left on for 12 hours or whatever. I got my bill the other day and um, I didn't go over. Shocking. So that was kind of cool. But we're here. It is the heat of summer. The lawn is holding color really well. Still on a super, super low amount of in. Um, just, you know, nurturing the soil has been the, the motto this year. And, and I know I'm going to have to feed it, but this is really what I want to stress to everybody is um, you can feed on a schedule. You can, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, or you can feed on what the grass is telling you. So last week uh, I was gonna put down an application of 1801 and I looking at my grass, I'm sitting here thinking, what's the point? There's no real reason. So I think we need to kind of take a look at that, find out what's happening underground. And um, you know, maybe we can see why this is holding up. So bulb planter uh the ultimate soil probe not really it works but so let's just kind of take a look here Got to get through the thickness first Time to water on this end. I've got some dryness down below. Can't really get in there as deep as I want to. But I'm going to take a look at the turf itself here on what I cut out. Okay. It's very dense still. You know, it, t it actually took more to get through this just top little layer here. Uh, you can see rhizomes coming out here. That's cool. Stuff starting to grow and branch even further. I got a lot of break down below, so I wasn't really able to pull a good root sample. But, we'll just kind of break this apart. I could probably go grab my shovel and show more. So, the soil is still damp. This has not had any sort of a heavy watering in a little bit and I can tell that it's due uh, because I am dry down around the four inch mark. Let's just keep opening this up. Now this was just a short core that I pulled out of here. Maybe a three inch core. I want you to see how the roots are unwinding. Check the mass as we go here. And I am gonna definitely have some breaking off. I've got some in my hand right now down below. Just gonna keep working those down. See those roots? Getting longer and longer. So this was out of, yeah, about three inch core. And this is what the roots are doing underneath. Look at it, it just keeps going down further. Look at it. Would you just look at it? Just look at it. So out of that three inches that I pulled out, we're now down to about a six and a half inch root, maybe pushing seven. Let's see, this is a four inch deep thing from there to there. So yeah, six inches. So I cut this down to here is where I could get it out. So about two and a half inches deep. But now this root mass here, and again, there's more further, but it's pretty dry, so everything was kind of breaking out. 
um, these roots are all wrapping around into the soil level. Okay, all of that stuff is just right up collecting water and holding on to the soil. So if you look at the soil, what do we have in here? We've got roots, obviously. See them right in here, little tiny ones that are worked through every little piece. We've got little bits of rock in there holding together. See, look at this little tiny root right here. That's the importance, as all of these little guys are down there holding on and doing the work and allowing there to be a greater moisture capture down below. Now, and then in this, what's so fascinating about it is just the vastness of the soil life that's right here. I'll tear this open a little bit and look inside. It's just roots, roots, roots. So all of this is holding moisture. Right here in this top inch, roughly where you're getting the most uh, plant matter, um, roots, and where your decay is from your clippings. Now if you look through here, so see here's a clipping from probably a couple of days ago starting to decompose, but you're not really gonna find a whole lot in here. If you take a look at my grass and I peel it back, we've got soil contact right here at the top. So there's no thatch to speak of no litter as it were. Um, this is just sort of that upper root mass area. So that's kind of cool. Just cut that out right there. I want to show you this. But you know when you're thinking about how much soil life is just in this little piece right here, I mean we could have, uh, I don't know, 50, 80 billion little microorganisms working around, decaying all this matter and feeding stuff right back up into the plant. It's pretty awesome. And as you go down through the different layers and you get into this cooler soil down lower, you can sort of have less and less activity as far as microbes go because they're going to do most of the focus up where it's warmer and start decaying that upper level plant matter and turning it into nutrients for the turf on the surface. So yeah, it's holding good moisture. I'm going to have to fix that for real. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just leave it and like hit golf balls into it or something. So. That's that. Uh, let me pull this back out. I think I started to talk about this. So one thing to take a look at in, in your soil sample and when you're pulling samples out to send in, you know, you really don't want to send this piece. It's really important that you go down under that level and get into the, you know, say between three and six inches is really where you want to get the soil out. Um, because that that's what you're looking for. You want to get down into that lower level because in here you can have uh, nutrients that are stuck. Uh, you're going to have much higher phosphorus readings in this section because of the decay. Um, you know, you don't want to have any, really any of this. Your soil sample should not look anything like this. So when you do send it in, make sure it's clean, totally cleaned out of everything. Yes. Looks good. I think that'll work. So it is holding. It's holding really well still on a very low nutrient load and not a ton of water. Um, and I'm just kind of letting it cruise. I mean, I am fully in the heat stress of the summer now at this point. We're gonna be in the 90s here. Uh, it's super, super dry. Um, if anybody's from the you know, Intermountain West area, you know how low our humidity is. Um, so it's dry, it's windy, sun is baking it all day long, and we're still getting this just good, consistent, really very nice, dark, green, bluegrass growing very well, super healthy. So yeah, a little bit of a bonus video there. So I, I think that what the whole point of this is this. Um, keeping it how I have, uh, I think it's important for people to understand that when you're fertilizing, when you're fertilizing with, a, you know, a, I'm gonna call it a synthetic, but that's not really even a good word for it. If, if you're doing just a conventional fertilizer, conventional fertilizer, um, you're always going to have a drying effect on the turf. Always going to have a drying effect. You're, you've got a bag of salt that you're putting out and you have to have that bag of salt break down and the water is going to go towards breaking those 
pellets, that's nutrients down. Oh, and, and that could actually be liquid too. If you had a high salt, high uh, salt content liquid, you can dry out your soil. And the thing to think of about that is this, is as you load up salt content, it's just like anything else in nature. Uh, bacterial life is affected by salt and high salt knock back populations. So it's the same thing in a human body, same thing in the soil. I mean, we're, we're such a perfect image of each other when we're looking at um, the, our cells between plant life and, and ourselves, and then soil life acting as like the stomach of the plant. So when you really get down and think about it, you've got to f get those materials in the ground. Like if we need, say, in our bodies more fiber, you want to be thinking about that also for the soil. We have a, a material that can recycle and put more organic back in, but we can also add that material into our program, get those more like carbon-based fertilizer options down onto the ground and give our soil some good food, good food. So that's the big difference between fertilizer and plant food, right? In order to create healthy, fertile soil, it's not by putting out bags and bags and bags of NPK. You'll never get there. Uh, it's, it's not gonna work. You have to actually build up the soil from the uh, organic matter level in order to have fertile soil. So when people first came across the grasslands and they said this is gonna be a great place for, to farm, it didn't look like that because it had been heavily fertilized. It looked like that because the ground was dark and rich and it was full of biodiversity and it was able to support life in a much greater way. So lawns the same way. You can make a lawn green with nitrogen. If that's all you want to do in your life, go for it. I fully support you in having an awesome lawn journey on that. If you want to dig in and do more, because here's what you're going to get. The benefit of nurturing the soil is this. Less disease, less weeds, less insect issues, less watering, Okay, all of those things were, are going to add up and they're gonna benefit you over your lifetime and other people's lifetime. So um, that's it, baby the soil. Make it, uh, make sure your baby's getting plenty of good food. So, you know, keep that in mind. Salt is a problem. Um, high salt fertilizers will cause issues. They will cause shallow rooting. Uh, it will cause a knockdown in, in biological life and we don't want that we don't want to have to go out there and amend again with like live biologicals it makes no sense your soil should be doing that on its own so that's really it just kind of wanted to kick out a bonus video today just it's hot it's awesome uh, i love it when it's like this and i came up and the lawn was just looking dark green and beautiful today and i, I thought maybe a little a little digging around in the soil would be fun so at some point i will actually go for a a very deep like post hole style dig so you can see what's happening with the roots way down deep rather than you know one that's just pulling out a two and a half inch layer here so that's it hey you guys have any comments or questions drop them down below um, I appreciate everybody's input on uh, the last humic video I was figuring I was going to start some sort of lawn traversy on that one um, but I, I think it's the, the amount of community input and, and what everybody's uh, contributed to that conversation has been pretty fantastic. So thank you, everybody. And um, that's it. We'll, uh, we'll be back on the lawn this week. Talk to you real soon.